Okay guys, I'm so excited. And this box is something that I've been anxiously awaiting. I got two boxes from Shar Music based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And one of these um, boxes, this one has a fiddle in it that I had some repairs done to, pretty much a total rehaul. Um, and then in this box is some bows for me to try out. So I'm just gonna open it, here we go. I don't even think I need the scissors. No, I'm just so excited. I don't need the scissors. I may need scissors for this part. Interesting. This is a um, this is a different case. So this actually isn't the case that I sent it up there in. This is the um, vintage French case that they sent me, which was very nice. One of my buddies there sent me. I'm wondering if it's in here. Yes, it is in here. Dun dun dun. And there it is. And we will see what we think. All right. Sweet. Let's see here. Get it out here in the sunlight. Ooh, it's got a pretty back, doesn't it? The true test will be to see how it plays. We can't play it yet. We'll have to tune it for one. You need to take this off. Let's see here. And then we need to to do this. Very tricky business there. <laughs> Make sure nothing bad happens. All right. Well, we should just. See if we can't tune this up and play it. It's just a German stock instrument is what it is. They made hundreds of them. Okay, so in this box are some bows that um, Char sent to me to try out so I can pick one out that I like. Let's see if I can... Hard. Maybe if I use the scissors how they're meant to be used. There we are. Okay. So this is just a paper explaining about what is in there. Um, yeah. Where did these bows come from? So these come from Char. Um, and this is just a packing list. So it kind of tells me what's in here. So there is three bows in here. Um, one of them I actually have played before. I played um, an Alexander 
I'm gonna say Langoff. I'm not really sure if that's if that's how you pronounce it, but I played um, I played a boat, one of those bows, while I was up there a couple years ago. And then there's actually a Guy Laurent Collector series in here, and then there's a um, a Paris violin, a French or a French bow. So anyway, here is their little case. So this is what the bows are setting in. Um, and we are going to try them out. So, um, on this, this label here is going to tell me what's what. So this is the Alexander Langoff bow. I don't actually know if these bows have any rosin on them or if they're brand new. This one appears that it, it has had some rosin on it at some point. Um, so we're going to try it out. We're going to see see how much rosin it has on it um for this i'm gonna use my fiddle because um and my fiddle's kind of like i got it Ooh. um so i'm gonna use my fiddle for this because my fiddle um is what i'm used to and for something as nuanced as picking a bow i need to use something that i'm familiar with to be able to tell anything about the bow um so this, this is my fiddle. Um, I bought it from a friend, um, longtime friend, who said he got it from a man named Randall Collins. If you live here um, where we live in Western North Carolina, you'll probably know who Randall Collins is. Longtime musician and um, instrument kind of person. He, um, he sold it, Randall Collins sold it to my friend David. And um, David's had it for quite a, quite a few years so I actually had another fiddle that I traded David for and then paid a little bit of cash for this one um the story is that the man who sold it to Randall Collins was from Denmark and he brought it with him when he came to America and he said it was his grandfather's so for a long time I thought this thing had Danish origins and it actually maybe we can put a picture in the video um the label on the inside is very hard to read it's and you're not you it would be almost impossible to see it on the camera probably but um there's two labels in there one says h Paulson, and i believe that stands for hans Paulson, which which um does put this instrument in denmark hans Paulson was a um famous violin maker um from copenhagen in the 17 1800s somewhere around there um and so I'm thinking, you know, this thing's Danish and it's got another label. So the, the, the repair label that says H. Paulson is from 1931. And then there's a label behind that. And I think it says Reparent, which is a repair label. Um, Reparet is actually probably what it says. Um, and it has a name of who did the repair. And I can't, I can't read the name, but I can read the date. The date is 1863. So for a long time, I thought that repair label was just the the label of whoever made it because I can't read it. But I um, used the internet and the internet told me that um, Facebook uh, Violin Identification Group was the place to ask questions. And so I had a few people say, no, that's a repair label too. So there's two repair labels on this instrument, which means if it was repaired in the 30s and it was repaired in 1863, so it was in Copenhagen. It was at least in Copenhagen in the, the 30s. That means it's probably much older than 1863. Um, and so I asked my Facebook friends, what do you think? And I had someone immediately say, oh, that's a hop. That's definitely a hop fiddle, which is a German fiddle. That's not Danish at all. Um, and just from the research that I've done myself, I, I would be hard pressed to believe anything other than that. And what, what, what gives it away, the dead giveaway, is these square shoulders here and these corners. These corners stick out in these very square shoulders. So that was a seriously um, kind of the the very strong characteristic of hop fiddles. That's how they were made. They were made in Germany. Um, and this one is probably late, late 18th century, early 19th century, something like that. We know it's at least as old as 1863. Um, but usually your hop fiddles will have hop stamped on the back and there was actually a time period around world war one where they stamped hope they replaced the f with an e which is really interesting um 
Sometimes they'll have a star here. I have a sneaky suspicion that this is not the original back that come on this instrument. I think this is probably, could the back could have been part of the repair, what, what the repairs were. Um, either way, I'm almost certain that this is a hop. If you, if you Google that and you get some images, you're gonna see this exact shape. And if I were to put this up next to another instrument, you could really tell the difference between these, these square shoulders. They're not that exaggerated round that a lot of instruments are. So, and that was the first thing I noticed when I bought it. And I thought, that's weird. Did somebody just um, take too much material away? But no, that it was done on purpose. So anyway, let's, let's see. I don't know how much rosin this bow has on it. It has plenty, it's working. So this is the silver mounted um, Alexander Langoff. Langoff may be totally wrong pronunciation, but that is how my Appalachian self is gonna say it. Um, so yeah, this is actually, it's not um, a hexagonal. Is it hexagonal? It's round, it's a little hexagonal at the bottom, the wood. Um, so we'll, we'll play our song, song here and see. <laughs> light feel I like it though I just got a nice balance point for sure nice let's try another one so this is the Guy Laurent um, collector series bow um, it's kind of hexagonal it's kind of round but it does have an angled angled portion in the, the camber here the wood of the bow <laughs> so we're gonna play it um, I'm gonna try to play the same song so that kind of that'll give you a good idea You can hear the same song over and that'll allow you to focus on the sound that the bow's making and not <laughs> I'm playing the song <laughs> the same the same qualities as the other one but they seem more exaggerated it seems even even lighter and even easier to play I like it too I like the sound I mean this is just has a, a nylon wrap you know it's nothing fancy about it but I did I do like it I like the way it plays very very nicely balanced so this is the um, this is the Jules I'm not going to try to pronounce this. I'm just going to call this the Jules Paris bow. Jules Peugeot. That's actually probably pretty close. Um, anyway, this is just, um, this is another round bow, silver mounted. Has a nice kind of feel to this. Feel, this one feels a little heavier than the last one. Um, we'll just play it though. That's what we're here to do, ain't we? <laughs> A little out of tune um, my a strings a little out of tune but 
I don't know, this one might be my favorite. It kind of has, seems like it has characteristics of both. It's in between as far as kind of how heavy it is. And the balance point with this one seems to be somewhere more in here, somewhere more in the middle. Um, yeah, that's a pretty sweet bow. I don't mind that at all. It's got a really good responsiveness. I think this may be my favorite. But as far as Shara goes, they're great people. I've seen their workshop. It's a beautiful place. Um, and Michael, my friend Michael Bean, is the one who made my instrument, fixed up my instrument. Um, well, he did, I shouldn't say he made it, but I, I'm saying that he, he, he rebuilt it. It's an old German make, and he rebuilt it for me. Um, and he's the one that communicated with me and sent me these bows, and he's the nicest guy, and, he, and he's very experienced, and so is his, his friend Bill. Um, they do great work up there, so I would check them out if you have not already checked them out. And thank you for watching.